right, uh, just let you guys know ahead of time today, uh, my allergies are bothering me again, so of course, you know, this time of year the wind's coming up, so my voice is a little funky, that's why. Um, so anyway, here is the basic information on, I'm doing a, doing a basic bulletproof street motor. And so, you know, we're going into a two liter, so we want to make sure it's going to be strong, be done right. And uh, since it's going to be upgraded over the original, um, and even if you're going original, you still need to make sure you do some of your re-engineering I've talked about in some of the other videos. But here's all the parts. Here's where you get them from. Here's basically, we're going to go through this whole set of parts piece by piece, and we're going to talk about each one of them individually. I know it's going to take a little bit of time. But if you are building, trying to build a bulletproof motor that you're going to want to hop in to go wherever, let's say, I don't know, in this camper, I might be going, you know, you know, a thousand miles away from my house. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But since I am potentially going to do that, um, I wanted to build something that's pretty much bulletproof. Now, remember, when we were talking about VWs, bulletproof is a pretty loose term. Because uh, bulletproof doesn't mean it's going to be as good as your new Toyota. That means it's going to be, you know, as good as a Volkswagen can get. So let's talk about these things one at a time. Now, you might wonder why I have this old cylinder tin here. And you might say, well, you can go out and buy brand new stuff. It's, you know, cheap and everything else. But the reason you want all the original stuff is because it has this original tin. It has still has the original deflectors. So even though that one's been crushed, okay, I can straighten it out, I can weld it, I can put it back together. Um, that's probably better tin than the other tin. Also, it actually ends up fitting better. You'll find that the cheap stuff doesn't fit. So even this fan shroud, we're going to go ahead and fix it because of all the stuff that's inside of it is all original and it's formed to the right direction and they do work better than the aftermarket except for possibly... Uh, the scat ones are usually about as good as the original ones, and that's yeah, the only other one. They might even be better. Um, so the scat ones are, are, you know, pretty much anything scat is going to be high quality. So we have a German gasket set. Um, comes with a red seal. Those of you guys who aren't building VW engines, um, or maybe you haven't built one in a while, of course the red seal's in here, and red German seal. And also the thing that's changed in the years recently is the quality of the pushrod tube seals is actually a lot better than the original old ones that they had back in the early days so if you were used to building motors in the old days or and you think oh you know you want to change up to these new uh, I don't know if they're neoprene or whatnot a lot of people think that all the parts from uh, overseas is are garbage and a lot of times that's true but AA, uh, th this AA performance, uh, they did give me a special price on a lot, a lot of these parts because I buy a lot of volume. It's not just because I'm a YouTuber. I don't go to them and ask them to do special pricing because I mean like that. Um, but they, I buy a lot of volume from them, so they actually give me you know a really good deal on a lot of this stuff. So I went direct to them for pretty much everything here. Um, but these are the uh, 90 and a half from AA. So if you wanted to go to a, a 1776 or, you know, or stroker motor, these are B pistons, so they're going to be good for a stroker. Um, they have A is the A piston, and they have a B piston, and it's basically the uh, piston pin height is different on them so that um, it'll make up for the, the stroke. So the, these are B pistons, so let's, if you guys are new to that, um, B pistons are for the stroker motors. A pistons are for 69 millimeter crankshafts that are stock. Okay, I got a lot of interesting things here too. I even know it's in this. Uh, Silverline's a good brand for bearings, so uh, that's a good one. You know, Club and Schmidt's even better if you have it. Oh yeah, and then we have our doghouse uh, fan shroud. Uh, you need to have this. Too. So you have your fan shroud with a doghouse. Doghouse fan shroud is going to be running cooler than the original 
the, the, a lot of the you know a lot of the old stand up coolers, and you need to have this tin for the out for that. And it, it comes with that, and it also comes with these two other pieces. We didn't have these two, but you need to have all of this on your doghouse fan shroud, or it's really pretty much useless. So all of that tin is required for doghouse, and the doghouse fan shroud is the only way to go for a bulletproof engine. So if you don't know what that is, real quick, I'll show you. Doghouse has the fan, the cooler is actually mounted on the back and it has its own exit point. All the air exits out um, that little piece that could, pieces together that goes on the back side of this and actually it exits out this port right here. So when you have that, you also have to have this tin, absolutely. See, there's the, there's a the little thing and this one kind of goes like that like that and then it connects to the other so all the air goes out and through the goes up to the front of the engine and then go goes to the back of the car so doghouse that's the one thing in addition to that when you're building a bulletproof motor um, you want to have an additional oil cooler these MP ones right here have a really nice setup because it has a fan and this is, I think, what, a 70 pass or something, 72? 72 pass, so it has a lot of places for the oil to be cooled off. I mean, these things here will make a huge difference um, with an aluminum case. A lot of people say they run hotter than the uh, mag case because it doesn't dissipate the heat as well, which is true. But then again, you're dealing with aluminum, not magnesium. And aluminum is much, uh, much stronger and has a, it doesn't, uh, expand and contract as much as a mag. So it's a more consistent uh, thing to have as an engine case. But um, that's why they made the late models and Porsches uh, out of aluminum. So if you look here, uh, this is gonna be in addition. So you're gonna have, we're gonna have the doghouse fan shroud. Then we're also gonna have, in addition to that, a secondary portion of flow of the oil to go through this and also through an oil filter, spin on oil filter. So. I'm going to compare the heads over here in the next part. But when you do a stroker motor, you're also going to need these kind of push rods here. Uh, where they, you, you actually make them to the right length. And these sets are available. I think these are chromoly. I'm not sure. Yeah, chromoly. So they're extra long. Um, and you can cut them to the length you need. So the problem with the chromoly ones is, is you got to set them at zero. There's a little bit more to know about that um, in, in other parts. So... The other thing you need with a bulletproof engine is an eight dowel flywheel. So this is not a chromoly flywheel if you were gonna go racing and you wanna go chromoly, um, but um, we are we are gonna use a chromoly uh, gland nut and they also have these in a larger size if you're gonna be a racer and you wanna go big time. But then again, you're gonna to have to put that trans behind it or you're gonna be blowing that up. So, yeah. Oh, what's that? Uh, oh, adjustable. They also have these adjustable to make the to, to make to, the to make the right length you need to um, if you want to make that work out. I think those ones are just cut to fit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So these ones. So what we have here is we're going with a, a chromoly rod, okay? Uh, and like I said, these can be you know this can be a little bit pricey when you get to this stuff. Uh, not that much really compared to you know if you break down the road. So, but again, we're talking about bulletproof street. We're not talking about racing. We're talking about bulletproof street. Um, these are uh, I-beam rods. They also have H rods. Um, we didn't feel we need to go with the H. Um, the I-beam chromolys should be plenty strong. We're not gonna be running really high RPMs. So these are the type of things you need to talk, think about when you're engineering your own build. Um, you know, the H rods would be really good for like a turbo engine or hive rev if you're going to run 48s you know maybe do the h rods um, even then you could probably still use these so if you compare these to the stock rods here um these have a little more clearance and stuff like that um, these have regular nuts on them and these have these uh much stronger bolts to go through them and they're just they're just engineered better these are the a performance ones uh, there's other brands some guys like better than these but a seems to make like i said you know like they make a lot of stuff overseas but uh, we've been running their stuff and we've not had really any problems 
unless we're going into the crazy race mode, you know, like I said, if you're going on the street, probably. All right, so anyway, we're going to look at the next portion here. We've got is the is the uh, aluminum case. Now, I was going through my cases, and I didn't feel like the cases that I had were good enough uh, because you're going to have to do a lot of machine work to your case. So if you keep this in mind, um, a lot of times by the time you get, especially you guys who are Midwest, back East, something like that, where you may not have access to machine shops, you may have to ship it out to a machine shop, have it shipped back to you. Um, these come pre-cut. So these will take a stroker crank, I think up to 82 millimeter. Uh, I don't know. You have to check with them. Tell them what you're trying to get. And um, they, they again, they have these at AA Performance. They also have these at CarCraft. They have them at CB Performance. And the funny thing is, is they're pretty much, from what I know, they're pretty much all the same uh, mold from what we've been able to tell. But what they do is each manufacturer does different things to them. So one person we'll machine it down so that these both are exactly the same on this side and on the other side i think cb performance does that um, another manufacturer will machine down here and put their logo on it uh, you know and basically we found that them to be pretty much all the same across the board just price is your most important thing really and then uh and you know and it'd be nice if you didn't have to double shim because on this side uh you know you see with that little stair step there you may have to have an additional shim on there to, to make up for that. So you're going to have to check all your cylinders um, and make sure that they're all the same deck height. So those are all things that when you, whenever you build a motor, you have to build a deck height. You're going to, you, we're going to have a motor build coming up. So that'll help you guys that are back east that have never maybe built a motor to learn a little bit about how to do it the right way. So also uh, plug VW Darren does a lot of cool motor builds and he'll walk you through it pretty well. He's, I thought he was, pretty darn good at just you know information and getting you to be able to build your motor so you can check out his channel uh, and uh, see if, see if there's something on there you can get to help you so because I'm I, like I said I'm not really the motor guy I was around all the engine guys Chris is a motor builder I always have to ask him uh, what he thinks is the best stuff because a lot of it's changed over the years and I used to build stuff for myself years ago and I did, you know, worked on customers' cars and stuff like that, but I was not particularly the guy to go to to build a motor. I was more of a guy to, you know, show you how to weld up your old car and, and, and get it painted. But anyway, uh, the other thing we're going to do is, is we're going to, for, for a bulletproof motor build, is uh, especially with an aluminum case, uh, having the extra sump for the oil is really good. Um, when, you have, when you have a mag case, sometimes when you put one of these on there, uh, if it's not done properly... Uh, you can have a strength issue because the case is, cases aren't as strong as these aluminum ones are. So, uh, but with an aluminum case, man, this is like really the way to go. You know, I'm not certain, me and Chris were talking about that, why they would redesign and make a whole new aluminum case and not put an additional two quarts. It just blows me away that they didn't do that. So, here's the things called cool tin. What they are, they're type 3 engine tin. These go under the cylinders. Uh, these are the things that everybody, I always tell people, you need these on your engine to help it run a little bit cooler for today's fuel. Um, it really does help. And these go under the push rods, so if you're going to change these without um, without taking the, the heads off, um, you're going to have to change to the push rods that extend, and you know, the spring-loaded push rods. So Chris is bringing over the original one. So this is kind of how they go. So what it does is it controls the air completely going around your piston, around your cylinder, and uh, makes it go through this metered area so that uh, it diverts the proper amount to go around your cylinders, and then it makes sure it goes all the way around your cylinder. And I'll show you what the original ones are like in a second. Is so that more air will go to your heads where all the where all the combustion's made in your heads. So here's the original one, which was kind of a little hokey design. Um, it went between the two cylinders like this, so you always had a gap of air going around here. And you'll find that if you ever had a blown piston, that the part of your piston where it gets cooked is always right here. So it kind of makes sense. Um, that's going to be your hard, hardest part of your piston is where this thing did not allow the air to go around it. Um, so 
that's what that's what we found over the years almost always whenever you had a burnt piston it'd be burnt right here we're right past where that shield was it would be like right in there so with these things able uh, controlling the air and getting it to go all the way around your piston is really a beneficial thing uh, and it does upgrade the engineering of the Volkswagen so the really cool thing here is uh, I was over there at AA uh, you know and because you know like I said I, I bought a lot of parts from them they really wanted me to show these heads so uh, you know I got such a good deal on them I had these really good Mexican heads these are the Mexican heads are probably one of the best uh, heads to buy you know for original stock if you're just going to rebuild it um, these are really well built okay and they had that little bit more beefed up around the spark plugs on them if you see here than even the original ones but look at what they did with AA what they did is they go with the small peanut spark plug and you see and how much more built up this is and how the combustion chamber has a better form to it so if you see here the form of this how this is made this has a better flow of air these have larger valves than the stock heads um, so a lot of the issues are, are cracks between the valves and cracks between the spark plug and the valve um, with the other with a lot of the heads especially when you go big big valve um, so we're also opened up a little more for the fins. There's not as much gas in it. Yeah, they, they actually made the fins so that there's better airflow going through there. So a lot of times, you know, you're going through and trying to modify that. Um, they don't have the plate on here, which we're going to have to put on there. I noticed that. They, have, they usually have a little plate that covers this. So that needs to be on there. If you're going to build your own, you need to take the little plate off of your other heads and put it on there. So, um, yeah, they're like that right here. So that needs to be there, that it helps, you know, the same thing. It does the same thing. This thing does the same thing that this little shield does. And it diverts the air out to go around the heads. So those need, that definitely needs to be on there. The other thing is the ports are larger. They have a better flow to them. Uh, you know, so it's so much better for today's fuels. Um, the exhaust ports, look at that. I mean, if you can look at this. And how that just goes straight through to the valve and you look at this one like turns a right hand corner almost if you look at it it's like and there's a big old giant clump in there look at this let's look at this compare so you can see it um, you can't really see inside this one but yeah it's it, it it just flows maybe we can turn the light on so if you can see how much more is in the way in there it, it, it just it almost makes a right hand turn on the one with my thumb and this one kind of just flows straight in so it, it, it's such those subtle things are a really huge difference when it comes to head flow so when you have better flow through your heads um, you're talking about better performance you're talking about better cooling the air goes through the air and fuel mixture goes through the head easier you know it's just going to be it's just going to be better it's more efficient it's not you know there's not as much waste when there's less waste there's less friction you know, there's, it's just, you know, it's just a better way to run, you know, your engine. So that's why I decided, you know, if you can look at the intake ports or they're, you know, they're significantly larger, not a huge amount. You could actually open them up a little bit more if you wanted to and port match the intake manifold, which what's what we're going to do. We always do that um, when we do the build. And they also come with, uh, these come, you can get them with, the other options you can get them with dual springs you can get them with high rev springs these here we got single high rev springs on these um, because we wanted single high rev springs because we don't really need the dual springs we don't want that much um, and you know we're gonna be revving it really high so anyway the camshaft we're going with we have a performance cam uh, this was a used cam but it was in great shape and it has basically the right grind we're looking for I think it's similar. I'm just going to say similar. I like to use the angle numbers because everybody knows them. It's similar to an angle 120. Yeah, and for this big of a motor, that will actually work really well and still give us, you know, performance. But with not, we're not going to we're not going to put a lot of carburation on it. We're going to go with really low carburation so we don't blow up our tranny because we do not have a built tranny for this. It will work as long as I don't go out and just punch it. You know, you just don't want to drive like that. It's just not, you know, you drive like that, you're going to be 
you know, putting a tranny in it if you put a big two liter motor in. So we're going with a, oh, the crankshaft. The crankshaft's not here. Or is it there? So what I was going to say here is on the crankshaft. The crankshaft that we got is a chromoly. What is it? There's two different ones in chromoly. We wanted the best one. Um, it's a 45, what is it? 4240 chromoly, 4340 chromoly, um, which is the better one. They, they, you know, they have a crassa if you're really old school. I mean, those, those are really good, but that, by the way. But if you look here, it's counterweighted. So, uh, it, so my whole thing is, is guys go, well, you know, stroke motor is not going to be as reliable as original. Um, you know, and the thing is, is yes, it can be as long as you don't punch it. As long as you don't put the put the big carbs on it, uh, you, you're you're going to have a strong motor. The bottom end can be really strong. Where guys go wrong is they start putting all the freaking high high rev dual, dual springs on it. And you put the freaking you know. And, and you're and you're gonna go you know you're gonna go high compression you're going with a you know 48s and all that stuff and, and you know then you know, or, or turbo you know then you, your reliability goes way down you know and because you're pretty much pushing the engineering to the limit but uh what i would say is every engine if you're going to go bulletproof if you're going 69 millimeter you you want to go counterweighted so Really, uh, this is a counterweighted crank. This is a stock crank. And you can see these counterweights here. Um, and so it, we're going with a 78 because, you know, today, back in the old days, when you used to buy a, a, a stroker motor, you know, the difference in price of just the crankshaft alone, like I used to get a, like a, a 69 millimeter, I think it was uh, counterweighted, and they were like around 100 bucks or something like that, $99. And then... Then the, uh, the the stroker motor, even a 78 or 60, 76, 74, anything stroker was 250 and, and up for a crankshaft. So back then, you know, you could get a whole engine kit for 250 bucks or 300 bucks. So why would you go stroker? So, you know, today it's not that way at all. It's almost like you go 69 stroker or 69 or you go stroker and it's almost the same price. The difference is you got to get the case clearanced. So in in our case, we didn't have a good enough case that was worth putting the money into getting clearance. I mean, we have a case that's good, but it's not, you know, it's on its last machine. So, you know, we don't want to spend money on getting the, the case machined out when, uh, when basically, you know, it's going to be on its last run. So we've spent all that money on machine work. Why not just go ahead and just get an aluminum one and it's fresh, it's new, it doesn't have any... It's never been machined and it already comes ready to go. So it was like a couple hundred dollars more just to go with, you know, a few hundred dollars, maybe four or five hundred bucks more to go with the aluminum. And, you know, for and, and you think about it for five hundred bucks, you got a stronger case. So, you know, it's kind of a no brainer. So but anyway, you always go counterweighted for uh, and also eight dowel. So this is what an eight dowel crank looks like. This is what the other one looks like. It's only got four dowels to hold the crankshaft. And, you know, if you see the Porsches and stuff like that, they have flanges or regular cars have flanges. So they're even stronger than these. So this is kind of, like I said, this is a little bit kind of pushing the engineering. That's why I don't like to go too much bigger than this on a stroker and say it's still bulletproof. A 78 is kind of right at the limit of uh, bulletproof. Uh, you could probably even do an 82 and be bulletproof. But, you know, as long as I said, you know, as long as you're not punching it, as long as you're getting on it. But yeah, I think the 78 is a safer number for the stroke. So anyway, also we're going with the upgraded uh, oil pump. The oil pump has a high volume, uh, not only for the engine, but it's going to be for the oil cooler system and the oil filter. Um, so it's going to have to run a lot more oil through the through the through the through the engine and, and all the piping. So you really need a high volume oil pump. We're going with a what is it, 26 millimeter? 26 millimeter oil pump and that's the kind of thing that you need for your uh, bulletproof build so I think I've covered just about everything and it, uh, oh here's another thing we're doing is uh, real quick forgot about this is instead of a regular okay, you have your doghouse fan cooler which is fine there are plenty adequate if you want if all you have is a doghouse cooler but we happen to have a type 4 so we had a type 4 oil cooler sitting around 
And if you modify the shroud a little bit, you can fit this extra, uh, it has like two more passes in it. So it, it goes up and down these things here to go through to cool the oil. And this one actually has two extra ones inside of it that are more than the regular VW uh, flat four one has. So if you happen to have one of these, if you're lucky enough to find one, uh, a type four is a, is a good also upgrade for um, keeping the oil very cool. So I don't think we're gonna have a problem with an engine that runs hot. <laughs> really, I don't think it's I don't think it's gonna be possible for this thing to run hot when I well, uh, you know, I don't know, it, and it's gonna pull that weight so nicely and easily. It's not gonna be working that hard. So you know, like we're not gonna put a lot of carburetion on it. We're only gonna give it um, a two barrel, which we haven't got out yet. We'll get to that later when you guys see the engine in the bus. So stay tuned. Make sure you comment on anything we've seen or missed. Um, the other thing is alternator. Alternator is better for uh, reliability, so we're going to put an alternator on it. Uh, but there's, we're going to, uh, but we're going to have a videos on this entire build. Um, so you guys stay tuned. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you put a comment on there about something good or bad, and uh, make sure you check those comments. And if you see anything that you like or dislike, go ahead and do that as well. So it helps the video. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check out this build as we're going on with it.